Hi, I'm John Robert Sutton. I travel the globe searching for unique foods that have been shared by generations of families, culture, and tradition. I will connect you to the stories behind well-sourced food and the people and places who make it happen. Welcome to Truth and Food, and I am with Rich Powell's here today in Los Angeles, the epic creator and owner of the world's finest sprouted nuts, Rich from Rich Nuts. How are you? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. And, you know, we met at a crypto conference in Puerto Rico. That's right. In and cri Crypto Rico. In Crypto Rico. And at that time, that was probably the Woodstock of crypto. It'll never be like that again. That was fascinating. Yeah, that was the, the peak, I think. The, the right peak, at the peak. The peak of it all. And um, so tell me what Rich Nuts is. What's, what is it? So Rich Nuts are a product that actually came to me out of nowhere. Uh, I was working as a firefighter and paramedic in Malibu, mm -hmm. and I would get out on these brush fires, you know. Uh, Malibu yeah. is keen to have lots of brush fires. And what I realized quickly was there was no healthy food on a fire. So if, mm. if you wanted to get an MRE or maybe a prison sack lunch or some fast food, you were in business. If you didn't eat that kind of stuff, you were in trouble. Mm. So I started carrying with me trail mix all the time because it's loaded with good healthy fats. You know, I want to eat a lot of nuts, protein, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I realized quickly was I was starting to have these digestive issues mm. like you know, bloating, gas, kind of uh, low energy type stuff. Just from the the off the shelf trail mix. From the off the shelf trail mix, mm -hmm. that's right. Or raw nuts. I I loved raw cashews. I used to eat those all the time. Yeah, I, I just loved their flavor. And what? So once I realized that the nut, I, I did some research online, and I found that these nuts were actually giving me these GI symptoms. And I read about sprouting and how you could activate your nuts mm -hmm. by using the natural process of germination. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that and uh, I came up with this product over several years of iteration. I started developing different flavors and stuff. And actually I didn't even consider it a product at the time. I was just making it a snack for me to have mm -hmm. and for my fellow firefighters on brush fires. And the thing was, everybody loved it. And everywhere I mm -hmm. went, I would share them with them. And I quickly became the nuts guy. I had mm -hmm. this jar of nuts I would carry around and I would just put nuts in people's hands and they'd be like, oh my God, these are amazing. I've never had anything like this. And to give it to firemen, that's the ultimate test. And in, in my opinion, for, <laughs> you know, strength and, and feeling good and fighting those fires. Now, when I, the thing that caught my eye about this, and I want to have you go into it, is what is sprouting? I've never heard of a sprouted nut. What yeah. is that? And what does that really do? that's different than what a normal planter's nut would do. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, technically, peanuts, planter's nuts are not even nuts. They're technically legumes. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, there's a very famous uh, lectin, which is called gluten. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about that one. So mm -hmm. that's just one of hundreds of types of compounds that the plants produce and actually concentrate in the nuts and seeds specifically to allow nuts and seeds to pass through our body and come out the backside and grow into a new plant. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they survive our digestive tract? Well, the plants concentrate the lectins and the phytic acids there, which by design block, inhibit, and disrupt our digestion so that that nut or seed can pass through undigested. Interesting. So what we do when we sprout them is we mitigate all those symptoms with a natural process of germination. So basically we soak them in water to activate them. Then we allow them to germinate. They go into a growth phase where they drop their defenses. They become more digestible and therefore more nutritious. Mm. At that point, that's where we bring our magic because anyone can do that. But then what we do is we season them lightly and then we dehydrate them. The dehydration process, it locks in the flavor, it brings back the crunch, and then it preserves them naturally. And like I just kind of discovered this process through iteration and trial and error because after you soak nuts, anyone can do that. You can soak them overnight and then use them the next day. But if you don't use them immediately, they get moldy. So you have to put them in the refrigerator. And now you're eating this cold and mushy, like cotton ball. Mm -hmm. It's not a great experience. So that's when I came up with the dehydration process. Cool. Yeah. And so how many years of trial and error to get you to this point? of having these on the shelf, which is at Erlewan, by the way. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tough. That place is tough to get into. Yeah. It's the real deal. Erlewan's great, and we've been crushing it there. We just had uh, NCAP last month, and it was our best sales month with them ever, so it's been really great. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it was probably, let's see, it was 
about two years where I was just making them and sharing them with friends and family and the fellow firefighters. And towards the end of that time, we were getting a lot of brush calls and we were short on staffing. So I would go into work for five days in a row sometimes. Wow. So we're not always like busy, but so I would make batches of nuts at work. And one of the reasons I really knew I had a real hit on my hand was because you know, to the dehydration process can take anywhere from 12 to 48 hours, depending on the nut and the density and the surface area and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of factors. But when I would have them drying in the, in the fire station, I would come in in the morning and the whole front of the rack would be missing. And I was like, what's, what's going on here, guys? Do we have rats or something? Because the smell would permeate the whole station. Either it's like a crunchy curry flavor or the maple pecan or the yeah. savory sage. And yeah. the guys would come in and just eat them. Um, eat them while I was asleep. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. I was like, okay, we got something here. <laughs> uh, you got, you got some thieves yeah. eating the, eating the riches nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, I'll tell you this sage, this savory sage is a game changer. Yeah. It is an addiction. And why sage? What, what made you put sage? What's that, that about? Yeah. Well, the, so the discovery process for me was I had these mushy things that didn't disrupt my digestion, these mushy nuts. But the problem was when I dehydrated them, I, at first I didn't put anything on them and mm -hmm. they were just lost all their flavor. They were super bland. Mm -hmm. I liked the crunch, mm -hmm. but I had no flavor. So at the time I was living in Topanga and I literally just walked out my front door. I had a sage plant growing there and a rosemary plant. And I was like, I wonder what these things will taste like together. So I dried those out, cool. ground them up in a coffee grinder to make them into powder. And then I, I needed like a little bit of salty flavor. At the time I was using Bragg's liquid aminos, which, mm -hmm. which are kind of like soy sauce. Those flavoring. are great, yeah. yeah. And then that basically caused the, uh, the sage and rosemary to s adhere when it dehydrated and it just kind of stuck to it. Mm -hmm. There's no binders or anything to get it to stick. Mm -hmm. And so that was really the way my process worked, just what I had there in front of me. Do you have a science background? I mean, this is remarkable that you <sighs> had the foresight to, to just do these things. Yeah, uh, I don't really have a science background other than I was a paramedic for 18 years, so I learned a little bit of science. Body and, yeah. yeah. Regarding that, and I just became super interested in food and its effects on our body, especially working as a paramedic, so... I would go out on calls and people are having heart attacks and seizures and strokes and all of these medical issues. And, you know, they're eating at fast food restaurants and they're eating, you know, cheap, unhealthy snacks mm -hmm. and drinking way too much sugar. And I'm like, these two things are related and people aren't really talking about it very much. So I started getting into the whole food thing and eating organic and eating paleo, which is basically more like our ancestors ate. Yes. And, and that kind of opened me up to all this stuff. And then I just kept following my interest and through iteration and practice. And I have like a whole, I have a notebook here. It's actually in my bag. It's a secret recipe book and it has cool. like all of my experiments and like trial and error. It's just trial and error uh -huh. and iteration and iteration, but I don't have a science background. Interesting. Yeah. I mean that when you think about some of the great inventions, you know, <laughs> Colonel Sanders didn't either. You yeah. know, and he made incredible recipes that were hidden. And even the guy with Coca-Cola, in a way, the same kind of thing. And you yeah. have these great things. Now, I also, why don't you just talk about how many different flavors you have? I'm, I'm just curious how many you make and what the flavors are. Yeah, so we have, we have, I have created nine flavors. There's nine flavors in total, but we're only in production on five right now just because business reasons. But sure. um so some of the flavors, like the first one was the sage and rosemary, and that came from, from Delicious. What, what was nearby, Incredible. what yeah. was at hand. Yeah. And then there's the second flavor was the crunchy curry. And so I was in traveling in India, and I went into the spice market in Pondicherry, mm -hmm. and it was just so beautiful. The It was almost overwhelming, all the scents and the visual colors of all the different sprouts, wow. all the different spices. So I stocked up on a couple kilos of different curries and paprika and stuff, and I came back and I started playing with that and cashews, and that was the second flavor, the crunchy curry. And that one's a little bit more spicy, a little bit more robust than the original flavor. And from there, I went to uh, the pecans. So the pecans I make with uh, maple syrup. Yeah, and, those are and dangerously vanilla. good. Yeah, they're, they're super good. Wow. It's like candy, but without so much sugar. It mm -hmm. tastes sweet, but the amount of sugar in it is is lower than you would expect, especially using um, pure organic maple syrup. So that was the second flavor. And and then the third one I created was I actually combined the sweet 
and savory. So I got the maple pecans along with the crunchy curry. I threw them in with some goji berries, blueberries, and raisins, and that's our trail mix. Wow. So those were the first, those were the original four flavors. And um, yeah, from there I went to macadamias, which mm-hmm. I love. They're high in fats, they're super keto. And uh, I came up with this flavor called Green Goodness. We're not in production on this one right now, but that one is, mm-hmm. what, what I love about that one is I took spirulina, which is a superfood that's very difficult to eat. If you've ever tried it, it's kind of like eating moss or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's it like, is, Ugh. yeah. It's a little rough. I combined that with garlic and truffle Interesting. oil. Interesting. And that one is just like one of my favorites. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I think talking to you, I, I was very impressed by your devotion to sustainability, mm-hmm. your, 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 your drive to make sure this is the finest nuts and the organic nature. Um, does that come out of a personal passion? I mean, very few people actually, a lot of people are talk, but you're actually practicing what you preach. Yeah. Yeah. So the intention of our, our business is to become uh, regeneratively based agriculture. So that would mean that all of the plants that we are using in our product would be, you know, grown in a more natural way, even more, even more natural than say organic. So mm-hmm. basically the regenerative movement, I found out about it. And actually I read a white paper that said, uh, if the entire world shifted over to regenerative agriculture within five years, without any cuts to emissions, we could avert the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was the first good news I've heard in like 20 years. Everything else is all, we're all gonna die. Yeah. And when I read that, I was like, oh wow. And at the same time, I had this nut thing coming and I was being retired from the fire department. So it was was almost like just surrendering to what is and following that passion Mm -hmm. and, and, the reality is I believe that children of this generation and future generations deserve a better earth, mm-hmm. a greener earth, a cleaner earth and a more just earth. Yeah. And I think if we build the, you know, these principles into the DNA of our business, we can create businesses that support and work in harmony with nature instead of like work against it. Mm-hmm. I think that, that has been fundamental to me wanting to do this business because, you know, I retired from the fire department on injuries. Um, I have a partial pension. I could go live in Thailand or Bali and just watch a ship go down and not, you know, not care really. But to really think that there's an opportunity to drive change with my business, that's what really motivates me to do all this because mm-hmm. it's definitely not easy to build a brand from scratch. No, no. Yeah. 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 So when you are, Dealing with regenerative, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Regenerative agriculture as yep. opposed to, let's say, sustainability or s- all these other words out there. Yeah. So there's a group called Kiss the Ground, and they're doing they're an advocacy group for regenerative agriculture. And their whole thing is if we sustain the, the ecosystem as it is now, it's already been damaged so much that it's already on its way down. And mm-hmm. so sustainability to them is not really the answer. Mm-hmm. We have the ability to regenerate it. And so when we talk about regenerative agriculture, things like biodynamic gardening come up. Mm-hmm. And that was created by Rudolf Steiner back like in the early 1900s not created. I mean, it was already a system, but he started to talk about it. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's nature. It's, it's like becoming mm-hmm. more harmonious with nature. So the, the key to regenerative agriculture is in the soil. Mm-hmm. So inside the soil, there's mycorrhizal fungi and there's bacteria. Now these bacteria work in harmony with the root system and they have a symbiotic relationship where they bring nutrients and minerals to the, to the plants. Mm-hmm. And in exchange for that, the plants bring, um, carbohydrates down and they exude them from their roots. So they basically exude uh, sugar that feeds the mycorrhizal fungi and the bacteria. In exchange for that, they get more minerals. So what that does for our food is it makes it 30% more nutritious. And it uh, what it does for the planet and the carbon situation is that exchange of carbohydrates sequesters three to seven times more carbon per square acre than conventional agriculture. And that's, that's the key. So if we could grow all of our food like that in five years, we wouldn't have to worry about the end. And I'm telling you, this is what is so important. Here is the founder and creator of a nut company. And you hear passion like that. And you think of these other large corporations that have nut companies. Do you think the CEO is going to be talking like that? No, he's going to be talking about shareholder price and all of this other stuff. And you just listen to that, and it really brings you hope. 
it, it really makes you want to and do only buy these type of products because it does give so much hope for the future. These are people actually doing what everybody is talking about. And it's it's really exciting. And one of the exciting things that we're going to go on a little adventure to Mexico and find where vanilla really grows. How yeah. about that? I'm super excited about that. Yeah. yeah. That's the origin in Mexico in the mountains, correct? It is. And so one of the things we talked about early on is Rich's real quest to find sustainable as well as regenerative products. And, you know, to buy vanilla from Madagascar and Tahiti, you're actually wiping out the environment because of the clear cutting going on to grow vanilla, which is an orchid, basically. Well, the actual area of the planet where this was created, the, the area, the genetic region, is in Mexico. And it's a valley called Papantla in Mexico. So we're going to go there and we're going to go source the true Valley of the Vanilla. And there are many women-owned businesses up there that are very excited that we're coming. And we'll be able to pick and place your vanilla for the future of your product. So that's going to be extremely exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. And that's one of the things I really love about you is your knowledge on all these all of these plants and species and like where they come from and where they evolved and how they evolved, because that's so important to how they show up in the world. And we've taken them and manipulated them oftentimes. And then we get this product that's not as uh, nutrient dense because it's been changed or genetically modified or whatever. So I'm super excited to, to get in the, get my hands in the dirt. Yeah. That that's so interesting. And, and also there's so many unique products around the world that can add to the different types of nuts that you have. Uh, do you have any other regions of the world that you want to source from? Uh, yeah, I would love to source, and we do on occasion. So our cashews come from different parts of the world. They're not really grown in the United States. So we're getting them out of Vietnam now and on occasion Africa, depending on seasons, because mm -hmm. you know nature depends on seasons and climates and cycles. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our basically network is growing of where we're sourcing these ingredients from. But for me, it's really about the highest quality ingredients grown in the right way where we can take care of the, the people that are producing them. So our whole, like we have the triple bottom line as our, as our mindset. So it's people. So the people we interact with, which starts with ourselves, and then it goes to the people that work in our business with us and the people that we collaborate with, like you, like how do we treat those people? How do we treat the people that grow our product? How do we treat the people that get it to us like that's all important to think about the energy of that so people and the second thing is planet like how is this going to affect the planet as a whole as an ecosystem so we want to be mindful of that and the final thing is profit if we're not profitable then we're just a really expensive hobby and we mm -hmm. go out of business mm -hmm. so we have to keep those three things in mind and those are the fundamentals now i business. mean it's uh it's really the, the the future of how business is going to work because we have a new generation coming, and this generation, the millennial generation, is demanding this type of economic progress, and you're capitalizing on it, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with what you're doing in the entire 3P process, which is really exciting. And it's good to know that there are people that are young that you're going to get at a very early age with this brand and they will carry this on the rest of their lives. So uh, starting out like this, it's it's so amazing to know that you're in good hands with the future generation. Yeah. Yeah. And they really resonate with the with the whole story and what I'm talking about. They're like, oh, wow, this guy's speaking about an, an, uh, something that I can buy that's good for me that tastes great and that moves things in the direction I want to see the world going. So it's kind of a win-win for, for the millennial generation. Mm -hmm. And one of my, one of my skills has been to connect with that energy of the, of the millennial generation. I'm a Gen Xer, but I, I go to different festivals and I teach classes on how to sprout your own nuts and make nut milk with them. And I, I teach that. And, and during that talk, I talk about how, you know, we live in the Garden of Eden, but we're just not treating it like that. So oh. it's not showing up that way. But if we can learn to connect again with the earth and especially our food source, it's so important. And the way that our food is sourced 
has such a massive impact on the world at huge scales because mm-hmm. everyone eats every day. Yes. So that seems to be like a place to have a lot of impact. Now, is there a time a day? Like where do you, when do you recommend eating these or how many times a day? Or is it, is this in between meals? Can it substitute a meal? I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, uh, they can, they're really good for like, if you're an active lifestyle type of person, if you like to go hiking or mountain biking or snowboarding or something like that, and you want to have a snack that can give you like, you know, lots of nutrients in a very small package, this is a great food for you because the reality is it, it, uh, it can get you the energy you need in that light package. So like, for instance, that's why it was so great for firefighting because firefighting is one of the hardest jobs you can do. You're basically hiking up and down a hill with a pack, carrying hose, working your tail off, and you can't carry like a whole lunch kit with you or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You need just a small bag of something that you can snack on that'll keep you going. So if you're ever in situations like that, this is great. But they also go really well on different types of food. So I like to have them in the morning on yogurt with oh, some wow. berries, yeah. the salads, maple pecans, yeah. on salads. Wow. Uh, I, I'm finding all these ways to mix them into ditch, dishes. And we do some of those on our Instagram stuff. Mm-hmm. There's like a, a keto coleslaw that I've come up with. I mean, if you're a restaurant out there and you're creating a salad, if I'm going in your restaurant, you actually show on there like, a, a, you know, a Caesar or some other type of, of mixed salad, chopped salad, and you have Rich's Nuts highlighted on there, it's a game changer. I mean, that's going to go a long way. And I see food service as a real big future of this. But yeah. also, not only that, where can you buy these? Yeah. Where, where, where can I get these? Great question. <laughs> you can go to richnuts.com. That's a very easy way for anyone across the country to get them or mm-hmm. um they're also, so we're a Los Angeles based company and we're pretty small still. So we're local, handmade, artisanal. And uh, the best place in Los Angeles is Erewhon or Sun Life Organics. And then we're at a whole bunch of mom and pop stores mm-hmm. like Pantry LA and stuff. But You know, Eric Garcetti, if you're listening, can you please make sure that these are at LAX when I get on and off all the airplanes I do because I can't find these in the gift shop. And these are LA based, buddy. Let's get them in LAX so the world sees what has been created in your town. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. why not? You know, even and, on the airplanes too. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I, I just want to get into something uh, about. Something we discussed and even what's going on at this time where our bodies could be compromised by uh, the virus that's out there, the coronavirus. And Mm -hmm. we had discussed bringing probiotics into these nuts. Yeah. And can we talk a little bit about that, what your vision is for that? Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to work with the the probiotics that we've, mm-hmm. we've spoken about because again, and those things come from the soil, right? They, come they do, from the, they do. The tundra of, of Siberia, Siberia, bacteria. Live. So it's ancient strain of bacteria. Good positive bacteria that actually fights bad bacteria. Yeah. And yeah. I, this would be the very first um, nut company in the world that actually not only has sprouted nuts, but inside would be a light powder that's filled with living, powerful probiotic bacteria from the soil that when you eat the nuts, that actually goes and provides tremendous gut health as well as boost your immune system. Yeah. Be a game changer. Yeah, totally. I'm excited about it. And so I'm in the I process. I can't wait to get my hands on that kilo. Yeah. And I'm in the process. <laughs> I was just actually at the World Health Organization on Friday in Geneva, Switzerland, and we discussed this for part of boosting one's immune system in general. So I'm really trying to get the FDA to start airlifting that stuff in as Mm. soon as possible. Love to start adding that into this. And this would be one of the very first commercial packages. It wouldn't solve, this isn't a cure for the virus. Yeah. What this is, is if you do have it, that probiotic actually helps boost your immune system. So as your immune system is fighting that virus, it's boosting to basically fight the common other stuff that's going on at your system at the same time. Yeah. And then combine that with the nutrient dense food and the healthy fats. It's like a triple win right there. Correct. And you know, one of the other things too, is that you see all these health bars that are out there, 
But if you actually turn and look at how much sugar is in those bars that are supposed to be good for you. Yeah. I mean, that's some, a big thing. So you're actually not getting your energy from sugar. You're getting it from... Fats, mostly. With yeah. The nuts. Yeah. And so, protein. Yeah. So talk about a little bit about the fats and protein. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sure you're familiar with keto diet, mm -hmm. diet mm -hmm. lifestyle. So these are pretty... Most of them are keto friendly. Now, some of them have maple syrup. That wouldn't actually be a keto one, but... Mm -hmm. This, even even on the maple syrup ones, the sugar content is relatively low. Mm -hmm. It's not like super sugary. And actually, people that are eating a very high sugar diet, they'll be like, wow, these aren't that sweet at all, you know, and that's, that's always their first uh, reaction. And the thing that I know is when I give the maple pecans to children, they just, they freaking love them. They're like, oh my gosh, this is like candy. Yes. But, and then for the parents, it's no guilt. So you can buy them Skittles or mm -hmm. you can buy them maple pecans. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that, that has really been good for us as, as families. But with the fats, the fats give you like sustained energy. So if you're doing anything, let's say you're snowboarding all day, if you have a bag of these in your backpack or your coat, you can take like a handful at a time and it gives you enough energy to, you know, keep riding that fresh powder. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go into the lodge and, you know, eat lunch and grab a beer. You can just keep going and it doesn't fill you up. So mm -hmm. if you have a big meal, you slow down and you kind of want to like slow down and sleep maybe. That's the carbohydrates. But when you're running off of fats and proteins, it's a different process. It keeps you alert. You don't get the brain fog, the whole thing. It's great. Mm -hmm. And so when did the product launch in the marketplace? That's kind of hard to say because the way it all started, people just started coming to me and I was sharing them with everyone. Mm -hmm. And eventually I realized I was spending quite a bit of money on organic nuts. I was doing over a hundred uh, pounds of nuts yeah. a month and just giving them away to friends and family. And I was like, wait a minute, Hey guys, you're going to have to start paying me. And they're like, okay, how much do you want? So my original packaging was just a brown paper bag with a rich nut stamp on it. And I would sell those to friends and family and the guys at work. And that went really well. And then we started with a cottage food industry license and we went, that was in 2018, we were doing a lot of farmer's markets. Then we started getting into some retail locations all through 2019. So the official launch, I would say it would be 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. That's that's probably the best way to describe it, I would guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And now you have a commercial kitchen and you're expanding and things are really moving. Yeah. And these are the type of things that in this current environment where you really have to boost the natural inner body. Yeah. That to stay away from sugars and candies and all these things that really are are foreign to your body. Yeah. You know, where these are natural to your body. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's it's quite exciting. And where do you see where do you see the future in this? Where would if you wanted this at your favorite place to buy, where would that be? Oh, wow. That's a great question. We're already in my favorite place, Erewhon. Yes. <laughs> at least locally. Yes. But I mean, I see the brand going global. Like I had some friends at Burning Man that I ran into. They were from China and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, what are those? And I let them try them and they're like, oh my God, these are amazing. How do I get these in China? We that have was, a solution for that. That was their first question. Yep. So I see regional production facilities in Asia and maybe Northern Africa that could provide for Europe. So I, I think we could be a global brand. And what's exciting to me about that, I mean, obviously it would be great to make a bunch of money. Who wouldn't want to sure. be wealthy? But on top of all of that, that means that our impact has scaled so massive that we're actually making a difference. And long term, like we, we haven't gotten this far in the business, but on the package, I wanted to say like, by buying this bag of nuts, you sequestered two tons of carbon or whatever that ends up being. We haven't quantified that yet, mm -hmm. but we do plan on doing that. And, and that's been a big challenge. Like you talked about earlier, like how do we create this business that has all these, um, high minded ideals that, in a system that's not set up for that. Mm -hmm. So we basically realize that we're, we have a disruptive business model. So we basically have to make the business work. And once we get it working in the system that's here, we can start to bring in more elements of the regenerative, of compostable packaging, which doesn't really exist yet, but that's like our long-term goal. Got it. Yeah. Well, it's exciting. I mean, this is a brand that I really, it's an emotional core for me, so I'm very excited to have you here personally on the show. I've been here with Rich Powells of Rich 
Nuts that you can buy at Irwan and online. And what's the address? Richnuts.com. Richnuts.com. Thank you for joining me today in Truth and Food. I'm John Robert Sutton. For more information about this program, please visit my website at suttonselects.com or follow me on social media at Sutton Selects.